it wouldn't be October if we didn't have a Saturday for the ages in college football as we recap all the madness here on the Matt Berry Show, ESPN College Football YouTube channel, as we do each and every Sunday with the great Paul Feinbaum. Um, look, I, I, I am so torn of where to start. And I think I'll start from where we last left the building, which is 2.30 a.m. Eastern. And Caleb Williams somehow, someway, saving Lincoln Riley's ass again and getting a win in triple overtime, leaving me stunned that they got away with it that late at night, that early in the morning. And for me, poking so many holes in what USC is right now as a team. Yeah, Matt, I mean, we we were at the same juncture a week ago after Colorado, and uh, it's about to end, uh, you know, whether it's Notre Dame, whether it's Utah, Washington, Oregon, just go down the list. It, it really doesn't matter which week it is. I mean, they are they are beyond the, the high wire. Uh, they're at the precipice, and, you know, it's too bad because, the, you know, we, we're talking about one of the most exciting offenses we've ever seen, but the, the defense is, is absurd. And we, I mean, they're just, it's not even – uh, you know, you could say it's a lack of talent. It's a, it's a lack of effort. I mean, there's this guy standing around like, uh, you know, they're, you know, they're trying to choose which, uh, which Taylor Swift song to hear next. I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond ridiculous. And, uh, you know, Lincoln is a superb coach, but yesterday in Dallas, they seemed pretty happy that he was for the first time that he was in LA and, uh, and, and they had Brent Venables and, and quite frankly, uh, USC is a great story, but it's, it's about to hit the iceberg. Yeah. You know, it, it's a great juxtaposition because Oklahoma never played defense when Lincoln was there and Lincoln would, would have Heisman trophy winners. They would go to the college football playoff and then they would get beat. Why? Because they let the team score 50 plus points. And now Brent Venables has bought into the defensive thing. That's his trade. He's defensive coordinator by trade. Got back into that side of the ball, owning that with Oklahoma. We'll get to them in a minute. But this was one of the craziest two hours I think we've seen in college football by major head coaches and major programs we've seen in the history of the sport. Because I don't, we were watching that final drive of USC. The clock management, awful. The decisions, were absolutely absolutely brutal, which led to USC botching a game-winning field goal after they botched the final drive an hour and a half, two hours after Mario Cristobal didn't take a knee to win the game. And we're sitting here thinking, like, what what are we doing? Yeah, you know, as far as Mario Cristobal, uh, I think we all, we all agree he's, he's a really good coach and all, all the things we always say before we say but – um, but I mean, that's, that's one of the most inexcusable decisions uh, in the history of college football. Uh, it, it, it reminds me of, uh, do you remember 1999, Kevin Steele, uh, Baylor, uh, had lost the week before by a missed extra point, I think to Boston college or somebody. And he decided to, to, to play bully football at the goal line. And we're going to, we're going to score one more time just to show you guys. And, and we had a pick up for a 99 yard run that reminded everybody of, you know, Herm Edwards in 1978. Uh, and Kevin Steele hasn't been a head coach since, at least he's been an interim head coach a few <laughs> times. Uh, but I mean, this wasn't just some vagabond coach. I mean, this is Mario Cristobal who uh, has now had two of the plush jobs in college football. And, you know, what's, what's so ridiculous is that he had things going uh and and, and I, I don't know how much he threw away with that uh and you know his, frankly his his explanation was even worse than his lack of attention during the game i've just i've net like look and i i love mario cristobal i think he's one of the great recruiters in college football i believe that he's going to get miami back to its place in college football which is always near the top of the acc and and playing for conference championships but you, you talk about the explanation. I'm sitting there trying to walk through in my head what the advantage was to not just banging a knee and winning the game. What Was he trying to make a stay? He's an offensive line guy by – I, I, we were sitting there watching that. We stopped watching for a minute. We're like, oh, they're going to take a knee. We turn around. We There's see no this, to make. I we mean, see this commotion on the field. And we're like, what? what is going on? Well, you know, let's just – I mean, there, there's no explanation. Uh, other than utter stupidity. 
Um, because how can you not be plugged into that? It's, I mean, he's the head football coach. I just, <laughs> it, it was. I mean, I mean, there were a million boneheaded decisions yesterday. You know, pick your game. Uh, Jimbo Fisher, uh, Lincoln Rallo, you mentioned um, going up and down the dial, but uh, you know, Elliot Drinkwitz, uh, but it, <laughs> just to start early. But I mean, that that's that's the most fundamental thing. And I mean, every high school coach in America knows that. Uh, this isn't, you don't have to make $10 million a year to, to be, uh, to be that stupid. Uh, I mean, you just, you, 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 you signal it in, uh, you do whatever you're supposed to do. There, there, there's no, I mean, what do you gain? Uh, I, mean, I don't know. Give me something I can feel. Got a cigarette just so I can breathe. 